Okay, welcome to another prepared flight simulator video. And in this uh, prepared video, this is going to be the first one where I'm using the new version. This is version 2.1. And I'm happy to report that uh, version 2.1 resolved uh, a lot of the issues that I was having in version 2.0. There was an issue where if you had the load screen set to load by default, then it would actually cause your whole screen to go black when you first loaded um, when you first loaded your flight all that kind of stuff's been taken care of and now when you go to the uh, different menu options you know in, in the old version in 2.0 if you went to flight planner for example that would constantly cause a uh, crashed desktop and that's been resolved now you may notice I got these like antenna things over here on the side of my headphones that you haven't seen before and that is for the uh, track IR setup I've been thinking about getting a track IR for a long time for use with uh, Orbiter prepared uh, even back in the flight simulator days I was kind of toying around with the idea of getting one and recently I've been playing around with that lunar flight game and it supports track IR so all those things combined that kind of pushed me over the edge and I decided to try it but only because the website uh, the manufacturer's website says that it has a 30-day no questions asked uh, return policy if you keep all the packaging and the manuals and everything package it up and send it back they'll give you a full refund of course you have to pay shipping in both directions but but it, that would be worth it to me to at least try it out and I really didn't think I would like it which is why I put it off put off getting one for so long and in the last few days that I've been messing with it I'm pretty comfortable saying that I don't like it <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate it in this video and talk a little bit about it so let's go ahead and get started um, in this video, in this flight, we're doing a mountain hop. We're going from 2v1, that's 2 Victor 1, over to KS, KX, that's Kilo Sierra, Kilo X-Ray. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me unlock the uh, track IR. And I guess first, briefly, I'll talk about, you know, how it works a little bit. Everybody's probably familiar with it. But as you kind of tilt your head a little bit that way, you know, you can kind of pan around if you tilt your head a little bit the other way. You can look out that way. That's pretty cool. And if you look down at the instruments, you can, you know, in theory, it's neat. And I do like the fact that if you kind of tilt your head forward, you can zoom in. Um, I do like that. But other than that, I don't really care for the track IR. Uh, for one thing, if I need to look over at my SciTech throttle quadrant, for example, this is what's going to happen in the video playback. You know that for one thing that's going to be a bit of a problem for recording videos uh, but even if i'm not recording videos i just don't like how much motion there is there's just too much motion with just subtle amounts of head with just subtle amounts of movement uh the, the 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 screen is going to be constantly scrolling and i expected that that would be the case and that's why i really didn't think i would like it and that's why i didn't buy one for years because i mean this is this is obviously not a new product but let's just go ahead and take off here, and I'll talk more about the uh, track IR as we get into the sky, because we still have, you know, we've got 80 nautical miles to go to get to our destination. So let me set the flaps, or rather the uh, elevator trim, where I need it to be. And if I look down here, you can see here, that's where the elevator trim's at, and I'm just going to kind of set it in the middle. Okay, now we're going to go full power, and then as usual, I'll kind of tilt the camera down and so we can see the instruments once I get up into the sky. So full power. And gotta remember that there's a lot of torque. And I, you know, I've been in real planes a number of times, small planes, and I just don't, I just don't remember there ever being that much torque. Of course, I've never piloted a plane on the runway, so maybe it's realistic, but I just, from, from the, from the standpoint of the co-pilot or the, uh, passenger I've never felt a plane pull so hard to one way or the other so I really wonder how accurate that is with this uh, with these simulators so we got wheels off the ground let's raise the landing gear you can hear that landing gear going up and you know it's it, let me uh, bring the trim down a bit because we're climbing like ridiculous amounts here Just getting the elevator trimmed for a flight here, and then we'll bank off off to the right because we've got to turn to a heading of 116 or thereabout. 
All right, let's begin our tur turn. And again, you know, the nice thing about the track IR is if you do kind of look around a little bit, it's kind of natural, but again, there's so much motion. You know, you have to really move your head really slow. And of course you can control the, the sensitivity of it, but I've got it dialed really far down and I feel like it's still, it's still just really overly sensitive. And maybe if the frames per second were 60 plus, that would help. It wouldn't be quite so much movement, but overall, let me turn it off. Let me press F9. That shuts off the track IR. Now I can move my head about freely. And I just feel like this is much more, this is much more comfortable for flight simulation. Uh, come back, come out of the turn. We Real, just realized I was at the 116. I'm going to have to turn a bit more to the right, though, because I'm pitch the camera down a little bit so you can see the instruments because obviously I'm not quite on track so we'll go to the right a little bit and that'll get us in line so now that we're at straight and level flight let's see you get trimmed out here a bit still feel like my controls are just really too sensitive but But what I started to say was now that we're a straight and level flight, let me turn track IR back on. We'll just kind of see what it looks like. You know, and again, for video playback, one problem I would have here is that I can't keep the view constantly on the, on the instruments down below unless I have my head constantly tilted down, and that's not natural. I suppose maybe for taxiing it would be nice because you do need to be able to look over to your right and left to see the taxiways better. But for general flight, you know, personally, I'd rather just have it off. And that being the case, I would rather just not even have it to begin with, because for one thing, it's like a $160 product to, in order to get the uh, track IR sensor and the what they call the Pro Clip. The Pro Clip is obviously better than the standard clip, because the standard clip is just like these little metallic wires that you attach to like a baseball hat or something whereas these have actual electronic sensors in them so they're going to be far more accurate but yeah i don't think i'll be keeping this uh i'm going to i'm going to try it out for a full week at least since i've got the 30 days but after probably seven days or eight days i'm just going to package it all back up and send it back because i just i just don't care to use it i'd rather just have the hat switch you know it's not the mo there's not so much motion blur. The movements are more jerky with the hat switch, but once you're settled into position, it's uh, much smoother. And I'm not even just talking about for the video playback. I mean, just for sitting here using it, because again, this is the first time I've recorded with it, but I've been playing with it for several days because I got it a few days ago. And just, and just sitting here in my chair by myself, I just don't really care for the way the movement just swims all over the place. Because you do a lot of subtle movements with your head, and you, you know it's unconscious, it's subconscious. You don't even really realize you're doing it. Put in a bit of climb here because we got this peak right there in front of us that looks like it's uh, kind of in our way almost. But yeah, I mean, you might uh, be sitting here, and you know you might scratch your chin or cough or something you know do what you do all these little things and when you have the track IR on it's just your 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 perspective what you're looking at is just constantly up down sideways all over the place it's I, I think it's awful now I'm hoping that oculus rift is better but I do have the, I do have similar concerns with oculus rift but I think it'll be better because you have that full 3d immersion where you have sort of that wraparound vision and that's what I really want more than anything is um, is is wraparound vision. I want to see the nuances of what's over here to my far right or to my far left that's outside of the normal field of view forward. Because when you're in flight simulators or in 3D shooters or any kind of game where you ha where you just have a forward view, you basically have tunnel vision. And if you walk down the street, that's not realistic. When you're walking down the street, 
you have you see things that are you know outside of your forward field of view and, and, and those things are important to see you might see a car coming down the road and if you have that sort of tunnel vision you're not going to see that car till it's right in front of your field of view and when you're doing flight sims and you're trying to land on a runway having that extra information off to the left or off to the right I think is really important putting in a little bit of left bank here just getting back over to that 116 because we are pretty well on track here for our target for KSK KX working on my trim a little bit just to keep myself at uh, level flight now somebody told me that this is right that the uh, the red is, is correct and that I'm actually over speeding the vessel I'm almost positive that's wrong though because if you look over here this airspeed indicator indicates that we are in the green I've also s seen this talked about on on the uh, the forum for the prepared you know prepared website and this was mentioned as a bug that this is uh, that this is wrong so if, if 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 this is correct then the form is wrong and the the moderators of that form are wrong <laughs> so I really believe that this is actually wrong I think that we're not over speeding and the other thing is when you over speed you get a red indicator warning down here in the lower right that says that you're over speeding if I took this plane up to, you know, 20,000 feet or something and then dove it, you would see that it would be over speeding and it would say that down here. It would say, you know, warning over speeding or whatever it is. Okay, we're 57 nautical miles away from the airport that we're headed to. And we're just doing a direct uh, GPS flight. We're not doing VOR because I wanted to... I didn't want to have to concentrate on those, on multiple things. I just wanted to concentrate on the flight and talking a little bit about the track IR, which I've had off for the last couple of minutes. So let me just go ahead and turn it back on here for a second just to show you guys a little bit more. So there we are, track IR is back on. And again, the only thing it's really good for is just really slow movements out that way. You know, I guess maybe if you could have it like lock into position until you until you have like a certain threshold and then it would start to move that way when you're just looking forward you wouldn't have all these subtle sort of you know movements as you do different things with your head I mean your your body isn't a robot you're not fixed in a perfect center position all the time Let's bank a little bit more to the left and I actually noticed that when the track IR is on my movements seem to be exaggerated and I'm not sure why that is but I I have finer control of my movement when I'm not when I don't have the track IR on let me uh, lean back a little bit not too much because then I get into the uh, like into the back seat which is pretty ridiculous but if I kind of lean back in my chair a little bit I can take in a little bit more of the outside world basically it increases your field of view I mean, it works, obviously, but again, for for me, I, I just, I don't care for it in the slightest. I'm, I've checked it out with Orbiter, I've checked it out now with Prepared, I've checked it out with Lunar Flight, and in all three of them, in all three of these simulations, I can't see a situation where I actually like the way it works. The bank back to the left a little bit. We're holding here pretty well at uh, 11.5 plus uh, 40, additional 40 feet, but we're within 100 feet of holding our altitude at one at one point. Yeah, if, if I liked the track IR well enough, even for one program, I would keep it. Like if it worked really well for Orbiter, I would keep it. Or if it worked really well for lunar flight I would probably keep it but I just I don't like it in any th in any of them I just I think it's terrible one problem with um, orbiter uh, well first of all it's only gonna work in a virtual cockpit and most vessels don't have virtual cockpits 
the XR2 has the virtual cockpit, but it's useless because all the instruments are fixed and you can't, it doesn't have an interactive cockpit. So that pretty much limits you to the standard Delta Glider, which has an interactive cockpit that works really well. The Aero Freighter, but the problem with the Aero Freighter is that all the MFDs are to the left or to the right. So the whole time you're using Track IR, you're pretty much going to either have it off so that you can have the camera pan left or right, or you're going to be using Orbiter like this, where you're looking forward so you can see the monitor, but you have your head tilted so you have the Track IR looking to the left or to the right to see the MFDs, and that's stupid. I don't think I've looked at it in the space shuttle yet, but I don't fly the space shuttle enough to really care if it works well with the space shuttle or not. Okay, we're just 40 nautical miles out from our target. Just banking the plane to the left a little bit because you can see we're just a tad bit off there. And that should be fine. Bring the camera up a little bit so we can see what's in front of us. And I don't know when we arrive at our destination which way the air which way the runways are, but I think I've got that information in my notes. When we arrive at our destination, we need to be either four or twenty-two uh, heading. It's gonna be either forty or two twenty. And the runway is going to be about 5,796 feet long. And there's no ILS at KSKX. Okay, so 04 or 220 is going to be our heading. Oops, wrong way on the tilt there. And the elevation at KS, KX is 7,091 feet, so about 7,100. All right, so I think we can start uh, bringing our altitude down a bit. We've only got uh, 32 nautical miles to go. And I'm sure that we don't have to climb over that stuff, so let's bring the throttle back a little bit start losing some altitude and we're descending at about 400 feet uh, 450 feet per minute go ahead and continue with that descent rate bring the throttle up just a little bit And if we look over here at the GPS, we don't quite have the airport in view yet, but maybe if we uh, tilt the camera a bit and then zoom out. So uh, let's see, zoom out is actually plus. Now we can see the airport, we're flying straight to it. We're gonna pass over one VOR on the way there. And we're flying at 116, and needles are perfectly straight, so we're right on track. 26 nautical miles to go. We're not descending, so let's cut the throttle back just a little bit more. So if we have a heading either of... It's either going to be 40 or 220, so I guess it doesn't really matter... It would either be this way or that way. I guess 40 would be a little bit better based on the direction that we're currently flying. But let's bring up the weather, which I don't know if I really have any weather in this one or not. I don't think I do. Yeah, no, zero knot weather, so it doesn't matter which runway we pick. So we'll take the easier of the two. We'll take 40. Twenty-two nautical miles to go. Bring back the throttle just a little bit more. Be passing over that VOR here shortly. It's gonna be TAS, even though we're not tuned into it, but, but 
we'll be passing over that shortly. Let's see what that notification is. Nothing important. Getting a little bit off track, so I'm gonna bank the vessel, bank the plane a little bit to the left here. Although if we're gonna land at 40, we probably actually should start banking a bit to the right. That way we arrive a little bit to the uh, south west of the airport. I don't know by how many degrees, so we'll go maybe 15 degrees to the uh, to this to the right. So instead of 116, we'll be at 131. Okay, we're down to 10,500, and again the airport elevation is 7,100, so we are 3,400 AGL. Sixteen nautical miles to go. Should have the airport in sight in the not too distant future. And we're basically right over top of the TAS VOR. Probably want even more angle than that. I'm just kind of looking down here at the GPS eyeballing it. If we're going to be landing on that runway. We probably want to be like way out here. So let's go all the way to like one, 175, 180. Descending at 900 feet per minute down to 10,100. So we are 3,000 feet AGO. I'm going to say 150 is going to be enough on the turn on the bank there to the to the right. Yeah, I'll go with that. It's about 150. Coming out of that turn, bringing the throttle down just a little bit more. And we'll take a look over here to the left, see if we can spot the airport. Not quite yet, no visual. Again, I'll turn the track IR on and do it that way for a second. Okay, it doesn't let you do the exorcist thing at least where you can turn your head 360 degrees. Back off. Sending at 800 feet per minute, we're down to 9,500, so we are 2,400 AGL. Let's go ahead and drop the flaps one, one level. Slow things down a bit. Probably a smoother way to do that. Okay. Now it's bank hard to the left. Bring the throttle way back. And now I've got the airport in sight. You can see it over there. Bringing the throttle back a little bit more, going to put the flaps down another another notch. I uh, forgot earlier, I a second ago, I put the flaps down way too early uh, without bringing the throttle back first. That's a bad thing to do because it causes your nose to balloon kind of way up and you don't want that. Just kind of 
trying to bank a bit to the left, but I need to, I can't bank too early because then I'll have a lot of correction to make, but I want to keep that runway kind of in sight. So let's try to do the landing with the uh, track IR on just to see how we do. Because for one thing, it is kind of nice to be able to just tilt the head a little bit to the left, but... Yeah, I just I just really don't like this thing at all. I'm not I'm definitely not gonna keep it. Maybe if it were twenty-five dollars I would keep it, but for a hundred and sixty, no thank you. It's not even remotely worth it. Of course to each their own. Some people obviously will love this thing, but for my taste, no. Okay, we've got the runway in front of us. We have four white lights which means we're too high so we need to we need to descend greater than 500 feet per minute now we've got one red light so we're catching up to the glide slope i'm gonna put the landing gear down now so don't forget now we've got two red lights so we're right on track with the glide slope so if we can keep ourselves at 500 feet per minute then in theory we will land correctly bring up the throttle a little bit I think we're slowing down a little too much at least we don't have power bring up the nose a bit we're descending too fast Tell I'm not quite center with the runway, but it's not too bad. I think we've got enough power. We're holding right around 97 KT. Just feels so sloppy in the sky though. Okay, we're too low. Too high. I suck. Too low. Alright, cut the power. And this is gonna be a crash, probably. <sighs> Alright, let's go around. Let's set off that stupid track IR. I can't stand this thing. All right, well, whatever. Horrible failure. What's new? And of course, my one of my devices decided to reset right there as I was trying to power up and go around. Something else that seemed to happen a lot. no idea what that's doing I guess it reset me to uh, 2v1 so yeah I'm back here where I started all right I think I'll probably just refly that leg of the journey in the next flight because really in this one I just kind of wanted to show prepared 2.1 and show this track IR thing a little bit but really like I said I can't stand this thing and I'm definitely gonna box it up and send it back so and I, I think I fly better without it obviously so that's going to be it for this video. If you liked the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next part.